We're going to have a look at one of Zeno's paradoxes. Zeno was an ancient Greek philosopher, and even though none of Zeno's writings survive, we still know a little bit about them because philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle, whose works did survive, have commented on some of Zeno's writings. And so we have some descriptions from other sources of what Zeno's paradoxes were. We know that Zeno wrote at least 10 paradoxes that all have to do with the infinite divisibility of time and space and motion. The one we're going to look at is often known as the progressive dichotomy paradox. It goes like this. Suppose a runner is trying to run a race. Before the runner can finish the race, the runner has to be able to run at least halfway. This would leave the runner with half the course left to run. To complete that remaining half, the runner would need to be able to run half that distance, which is a quarter of the total distance. This would leave the runner with a quarter of the race left to run. In order to do that, the runner would then have to run half of that distance, which is an eighth of the total distance, leaving the runner still with one eighth of the total distance left to run. And if we repeat this, we find that after any finite number n stages, the runner would still have 1 over 2 to the power n of the race left to run. And so the question is, if any finite number of stages would leave the runner with a portion of the race left to run, how can the runner ever complete the race? Now, this paradox could be viewed as a question about the infinite divisibility of space and time, which is not really a mathematical question. Or it could be a question about just the general concept of infinity. But if we imagine that the distances run by the runner can be modeled by the real numbers, and so the race course can be viewed as a portion of the real number line, then this paradox does lend itself to a little bit of fun mathematical analysis. To get started, let's have a look at the distances run by the runner at each stage. In the first stage, the runner runs half the distance. In the second stage, the runner runs a further one quarter of the distance. And in the third stage, the runner runs a further one eighth of the distance. This gives us in general, at stage k, the runner runs a distance of 1 over 2 to the exponent k. This means the total distance run by the runner at the nth stage would be the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the sequence f of k equals 1 over 2 to the power k. The first thing we can prove from this is that it is true that at the nth stage, the runner still has 1 over 2 to the power n of the distance left to run. In fact, this gives us a closed formula for the sum of this sequence. We have for all n in the natural numbers, the sum as k goes from 1 to n of the sequence f of k equals 1 over 2 to the exponent k will be the total distance of the race course, which is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the exponent n which is the distance the runner still has left to run. To prove this, we're going to use the principle of mathematical induction, which means we can start by considering the set of those natural numbers for which this closed form formula holds. To prove that the number one is in the set, we can see that on the left-hand side of our equation, when n has a value of one, we have the sum as k goes from one to one of the sequence one over two to the exponent k. This is of course defined to just be the first term in the sequence, which is one over two to the exponent one, or in other words, one half. One half is of course the same as one minus one half, which gives us one minus one over two to the exponent one. And this proves that one is an element in the set A. Next, we need to show that A is an inductive set. To do this, we take an arbitrary element of the set A, and since this element is in A, we know that the formula holds, which means the sum as k goes from one to n of the sequence one over two to the exponent k is equal to one minus one over two to the exponent n. What we're trying to prove is that the number n plus one is in the set A. This means we're trying to prove that the sum as k takes values from one to n plus one of this sequence is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the exponent n plus 1. If we look at the left-hand side of the equation we're trying to prove, we see that the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 of our sequence is defined to be the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the same sequence plus the n plus first term, which is 1 over 2 to the exponent n plus 1. Knowing that the number n is in the set, we have that the sum from 1 to n of the sequence is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the exponent n. If we now get a common denominator, we have 1 minus 2 plus 1 
over 2 to the exponent n plus 1. This gives us 1 minus 1 over 2 to the exponent n plus 1, which is exactly what we're trying to prove. We've now shown that n plus 1 is an element in the set A, which means that A is an inductive set. This proves that all natural numbers are in the set A, and so our formula holds for all natural number values of n. Another thing we can prove is that the powers of 2 get relatively large as n gets large. Let's prove for every n in the natural numbers, 2 to the exponent n will always be greater than n itself. Again, we're going to prove this using the principle of mathematical induction, and so we start by considering the set A of those values of n for which our inequality holds. First, since we know that 1 is less than 2, we know that 1 is less than 2 to the exponent 1, which proves that 1 is an element in our set. Next, to prove A is an inductive set, we take an arbitrary element n in A, which means for this value of n, we have n is less than 2 to the exponent n. We're trying to prove that n plus 1 is also in the set A, which means we're trying to prove that n plus 1 is less than 2 to the exponent n plus 1. If we begin with our known inequality, n is less than 2 to the exponent n, we can multiply both sides of this by 2 to give us 2n is less than 2 to the exponent n plus 1. Next, since we know that n is a natural number, we know that n is at least greater than or equal to 1. If we add n to both sides of this inequality, we get that n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2n. And now, using transitivity, we have that n plus 1 is less than 2 to the exponent n plus 1. This shows that n plus 1 is an element in the set A, which proves that the set A is inductive. And so, by the principle of mathematical induction, all natural numbers are in the set A, which means the inequality holds for all values of n in the natural numbers. Now let's take a look at what we can say about Zeno's paradox. Suppose x is the distance that the runner is able to run and we're assuming that this distance x is a real number. One thing we know about x is that since the runner doesn't need to continue running after finishing the race, x should not be bigger than 1. This means we can assume that x is less than or equal to 1. We can also say that even if the runner is not able to complete an infinite number of stages in the race, the runner should be able to complete any finite number of stages in the race. This means for any finite number n, the distance run by the runner will be at least the distance that the runner can run in the nth stage. Our claim is that under these two assumptions, the only possibility is that the runner completes the race. In other words, we're going to prove for every value of x in the real numbers, if x is less than or equal to 1, and for every value of n in the natural numbers, the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the sequence f of k equals 1 over 2 to the exponent k is less than or equal to x, then the only value that x can take is 1, meaning that the only possible distance the runner can run is the complete race. Let's prove this. First we let x be an arbitrary real number, and then we can make our two assumptions that x is less than or equal to 1, and that for every value of n in the natural numbers, x is greater than or equal to the distance run in the first n stages. And we can add to those assumptions that x is not equal to 1 if we're doing a proof by contradiction. Since we have that x is less than or equal to 1, but x is not equal to 1, the only possibility is that x is less than 1. This means that 1 minus x is greater than 0. Recall that from the Archimedean property, we know that there is a natural number value of n for which 1 is less than n times 1 minus x. Also, since we know that 2 to the exponent n is greater than n, for this same value of n, we have 1 is less than 2 to the exponent n times 1 minus x. If we divide both sides of this inequality by 2 to the exponent n, we have 1 over 2 to the exponent n is less than 1 minus x. And if we then bring x over to the left-hand side and 1 over 2 to the exponent n over to the right-hand side, we have that x is less than 1 minus 1 over 2 to the exponent n. However, we know that 1 minus 1 over 2 to the exponent n is the closed form formula for the sum of our sequence. This gives us x is less than the sum, as k goes from 1 to n, of 1 over 2 to the exponent k. However, this is a contradiction because it shows that the distance the runner has run, which is x, is less than the distance the runner is capable of running in n steps, which is just a finite number of steps. And so it contradicts our assumption that x is greater than or equal to this sum for every value of n. 
With this contradiction, we've proven that if our two premises hold, then the only possibility is that the runner completes the race.